So I just completed the uh, new photogrammetry on Selma Mangini Park um, at the intersection of Main Street and Broadway in Clarkdale. And I uh, wanted to give the uh, other users of this map uh, a little orientation on how the map works, how the whole program works, what you can measure, and how you can do all of those things. So on your screen right now, you can see that uh, Selna Mangini Park is kind of outlined in a slightly brighter, more high resolution image than the rest of the surrounding uh, maps here. This other map is just Google Earth. So you can see that, uh, you know, the resolution on this area around the old high school is very different from the resolution that you find uh, here on the map as opposed to right across the street. So uh, one of the first things that uh, we wanted to do is probably uh, annotate the park itself, the three acres that constitute the park. Um, and you'll notice that I can zoom in and zoom out uh, very easily with my scroll wheel. I can move the map by uh, holding down the left mouse button. And the rest of it is uh, fairly uh, intuitive. <clears throat> so let's start by annotating uh, the park itself. We're going to go over here on the left side of the screen. We're going to select uh, the area um, marker, and it's going to give us that uh, cross uh, hatch, which we'll then click uh, with the left mouse button as we go around the park. And if we hold that button down, we can actually move the map without uh, uh, making a, uh, an annotation on there. So you'll notice that it's starting to produce a total filled in kind of blue uh, map here. Later I'll show you how to refine that map so we can get very precise uh, measurements and so you can show exactly where um, the park lies and other town properties begin. When we get close to the end here, I'm going to click, you can see how this last, the first actual marker there, a uh, little black dot appears in it. If I click on that, that's going to complete that uh, annotation of the town park. And then back here over on the left, you can see that it shows us the flat area uh, covered by that and the surface area. The surface area is often larger than the flat area because it uh, incorporates hills and elevations and buildings and trees and other things like that. And so it's a measurement of the entire uh, surface as though you laid a blanket over the whole thing. Um, if we want to refine uh, this, uh, make a little, a little closer approximation of it, we can go into kind of standard uh, area manipulation. As you can see, what I'm doing here is uh, putting the markers right on the edge of the sidewalk there. The edge, uh, I consider the sidewalk part of <clears throat> non-park property. Uh, you can include it if you consider it part of the park, whatever you want to do. But we can then go around the entire park and move these uh, to precisely the border that you need to <clears throat> Uh, annotate later on. It'll, it'll eventually, as you do that, that 2.95 acres will become very close to three acres. You can see it was pretty far off over here uh, going through the sidewalk. Next thing we might want to do is uh, make some basic measurements of the park. So we're going to draw a line from the north middle of the park to the south here, and we'll do that uh, by going back to that original window, selecting distance, clicking once on the north part, and once, twice on the south. <clears throat> that line then uh, shows us that we've, that's a 513 foot uh, measurement. And the little line that we see here 
is the elevation profile of that same line. So as I run the cursor over that elevation profile, you can see that the dot is moving along this line. That'll show you exactly where you are and what the elevation of that area is. So if I want to find out uh, what the elevation of the basketball court is, one of the ways of doing it is to get that line right there. And it says it's 3,464 feet off the ground. Um, or <laughs> not off the ground, <laughs> but uh, uh, in elevation. And we can make uh, similar lines, as many as we like, in various areas, like we might want to run one across right here, uh, across the park, and get some idea of how that elevation changes. Forgot to click twice there. So it'll take it a minute, and it shows you that that has uh, a distance of 306 feet, uh, and that its uh, slope is 3.36 degrees or 5.87 percent. Those are useful data when you want to uh, do grading or uh, fills or anything like that uh, in an area like this. And then again we have that same elevation profile uh, that we had down there. Um, we can also make lines that um, are not just two-part lines. We can make a line that goes from here to the car, down to the basketball court, and over to the connex that's parked there right now. <clears throat> and that will tell us that that now is a 413 foot uh, line and that it has a very different kind of a profile as it goes. So that might be a useful thing uh, for a path. If you want to do a path through here, uh, walking path or something like that. It'll give you the the elevations and the, uh, and the slope uh, of the various sections of it as you go. If we want to get rid of that, <clears throat> excuse me, we'd go back. We can click on that same line uh, and then select the trash uh, bin that's over here on the left and that'll get rid of it. <clears throat> Let's say we want to now find out how big is this basketball court. I'm going to kind of zoom in on it a bit and we'll select area now for that and we'll start clicking right at the corners of the basketball court. We can refine this later too as we did before uh, the same way that we did. Now that tells us that this is about 2017 square feet. Um, we can, uh, we can move that if we want to, if we decide, well, we want to see what that looks like over here to have that same kind of a thing uh, there. We want to build another basketball court or we want to double the size. We would give it, get a, an idea of what that would take to do in various places by grabbing this handle here and moving that wherever we want to. So we're going to put it back there for now. You can change the color of these things and, and other uh, aspects of them by clicking on that color. We'll make that one red or orange for now. Now we're going to annotate, um, let's say, this play area because we can see there's some equipment in there. We know that that's uh, one that exists now. So we're going to grab the area marker and we can see that this kind of uh, takes this shape right here. And we know that we have a 3,268 foot uh, play area. We can also now name that um, playground equipment. We'll get the Y out of that. Huh? So we know that uh, what we're looking at here is playground equipment. We could annotate uh, this connex as a connex, and this is the ball court. We can go in any time and make those changes. So I can click on the, ball, the uh, ball court here and give it a name. Basketball court. And these are immediately saved. Anytime you make a change in this map, it's saved to the, uh, to the web to the uh, organization called Drone Deploy that does the manipulation or the, uh, the uh, 
makes these maps for us out of the pictures that I take with the drone. A couple of other things uh, really quickly. There is a volume marker you can see over here. The volume marker uh, we would use, let's say we want to know what the volume of this connex is. But it might be a grove of trees, it might be a building, it might be a connex, whatever it is. And we're going to draw this on some of the flat area around it and on the connex itself. Same way we did before, we're clicking on that. It now tells us that the area is 319 square feet. The net volume is 44 cubic yards. Uh, if we're going to cut and fill on a hillside or take a mountain out of something or make some other kind of dirt of movements, it tells us how much we would have to cut or fill to make that kind of a thing flat. Um, so uh, you can change this from linear fill to the lowest point to a triangulated um, measurement and other things like that. Let's say now that we want to know how many light poles we have out there right now. And we have, let's say we have a whole lot of them. We can go back and we can select count here. And we can just click on each one of those light poles. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, light poles out on that property. And uh, it'll tell us here now that's a new annotation. You can look at all of your annotations by going to the annotation marker here, clicking on the little right arrow, and it'll show each of those uh, for you. So here's that uh, that count one that we just did. We can click on that one and it'll highlight those and we can make that light poles. <clears throat> you can also use these uh, markers over here, the check marks, to either uh, allow those things to appear or disappear. Watch the basketball court here. I'll click on the basketball court, it appears, or click on it again and it disappears. Or clicking up here at the top uh, will make all of your annotations uh, either appear or disappear. So lots of really cool stuff uh, here. If uh, as the project continues, we'll continue to do other uh, photogrammetry that will that will be updating this map. Uh, those maps are then all stored on this same project, which is called, uh, it's in the Clarkdale 2 uh, folder, and it's called Selma Mongini Parks. Up here at the top, you can see that uh, we've got a date and we've got some arrows. Well, I ran this same uh, map, pretty much, uh, on October 16th, 2018. That's what it looked like at that time. Uh, we can, again, we can go into the annotations and just turn them all off if we want to take a good look at it. We can see that at that time the, uh, the playground was a little different. Uh, some of the other landscaping and stuff was different. Um, the grass field was here, you know. And as the project continues, we'll be able to just go through that um, and select um, different dates. You can zoom in, by the way, on, say, the basketball court, and then let's see what the basketball court looked like on October 16th or on February 16th. And as we go again through the project, we'll continue to be able to click on those on various dates. Anytime that you would like uh, a new map done for a particular reason, uh, you just have to let Joni know uh, at the town of Clarkdale. She'll let me know. <clears throat> and I'll run another flight uh, as quickly as I can and get it processed uh, and let you know about it. <clears throat> Each of these maps is um, calibrated for uh, elevation. So we're going to go back to this October 16th map and look at the details over here. Look at the calibration tool. It says we're calibrating the elevations in the map by the middle of that crosswalk at 3,481 feet. So we're going to go to the one we just did now, the February 16th map. We're going to go to details again. 
and click on the middle of that. And we're going to give that a known elevation of 3,481. Now, uh, <clears throat> everywhere on the map is calibrated uh, to that standard. We can go in and see what the elevation is now by clicking on one of these location markers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, down on the ball diamond, on the baseball diamond here. And it tells us that our elevation of that baseball diamond is 3,461 feet. We can actually move these around if we want to and just check the elevation in various places. There it's 3,464. We go up here, 3,476, etc. Top of the connex is 3,472. So pretty cool, uh, just a ton of things that you can do on this. Uh, you're certainly allowed to just play around with it. You have uh, permission to edit this. Uh, if I've given you that permission, if I haven't and you need it, please let me know. Um, and know that any of the changes that you make in it will be uh, recorded as soon as you make those changes. So if you have something that you think needs to be returned to its original state, uh, you should make a note of what that state is before you make the changes. Um, okay, up to this point, we've been using the, the 2D aerial photograph, uh, photographic map of Selna Mongini Park. But the program, uh, Drone Deploy, um, as part of its photogrammetry, also provides us with two or three other really kind of uh, wonderful things. And one of those is a complete three-dimensional model of whatever you've mapped. So we're looking over here on the left uh, side of the uh, where the menu bar is and it says map or model. If we click on model, it's going to create a three-dimensional uh, model of that particular map. It takes a little while depending on how much uh, computing power your computer has, uh, but you can now see that I can turn this model around, see the various uh, heights and differences in it, um, I'm doing that with my left mouse button, moving it forward, backward, left and right. And uh, with the right mouse button, I can move the entire uh, map around. And then with the scroll key, I can scroll in on uh, things like uh, that ball quarter or, or whatever else. This is usually more applicable to things that have a lot of uh, three-dimensionality to them. Uh, Selma Mangini Park is not a particularly good example of that, but as you, uh, as the project uh, continues, um, we'll shoot this in a different way that gives us much better three-dimensional capability. Uh, that involves flying around the entire project and shooting oblique photographs that show cabanas and buildings and, and uh, other elevational differences. Uh, much more accurately than this one was flown to do. You can see that the monkey bars, for instance, are you know, it's kind of okay, those are monkey bars, but they look like they've been hit by a truck. Uh, they'll look real uh, if we shoot this uh, for structures rather than for terrain the way this one was done. So you have that, uh, kind of cool, and it, it, even today it's, it's fairly useful for things like, well, look at the ball court at the basketball court here has a retaining wall around it, which is kind of a mystery when you look at the uh, two-dimensional photograph. Uh, but if in the 3D, you can see that it's about a two-foot high retaining wall that's retaining this uh, dirt right back here behind the thing. And there are other, you know, other ways to use this that you'll uh, find as you um, explore around the program. Going back to the map, uh, another function that this has that I, I really like is this right here. It says either plant health or elevation. Uh, we're going to click on the elevation. That's now going to give us a, a, th a complete uh, kind of a tie-dye uh, representation of the various elevations in the project. Uh, blue and the darker blues are lower elevations and red and the brighter reds are higher elevations and the greens are somewhere in the middle on this particular project. We can also take those and refine them a little bit. Let's say we want to 
refine this uh, just to the area that's represented by the ballpark here. We're going to move on the left side uh, one of the sliders so that the um, the map is now just representing the areas between the two sliders from about uh, 3,455 feet to 3,466 feet. And it's spreading that red and blue spectrum now over that much smaller uh, gradation. Um, let's turn those in, uh, annotations off for a bit. Now you can see that uh, the top of the ballpark is much higher uh, than the uh, batter's box uh, down here on the ballpark. But actually that that entire uh, area is represented by the, air, the difference between 3,455 and 3,466. So there's a you know, 11 foot difference in there. We can spread that out a little bit and it uh, and again it spreads that spectrum that now out over whatever you have set over on the left uh, there in the histogram. Um, pretty cool and again uh, very nice uh, especially if you just let's say we just want to see the area outside the ballpark now uh, down in this area we would move our sliders to something that's closer to just that area and uh, you can just kind of mess with it until it gets you uh, the picture that you want. You can now see that the the north and south eastern part of it is lower than the, than the western part of it over here. And we know what the complete difference is here. We can get exact figures by drawing one of those distance lines across it too. So let's now move that in there and it'll tell us exactly uh, what the difference is, which is 12.16 feet uh, over that transect. Pretty cool. Um, Let's get rid of those annotations again. And instead of elevation, we'll turn it off. And we would look at plant health. Well, that's not going to show us a lot right now. It's pretty much showing us what is green and what isn't green. Uh, but in the summertime or the spring or fall, this, this actually is a very useful thing. It'll tell you that uh, these trees are green and in good shape. and and other parts of the grass that might get put in are in worse shape or whatever. This is not a highly complex real vegetation model like you might find if you had uh, infrared photography to do it, but it's a simulation that can be useful for some things. And sometimes it'll help you differentiate between one kind of vegetation in a project um, and another. We can click those on at the same time if we want. They get kind of jumbled, so it really doesn't uh, show what you need to do. But you notice that the plant health uh, also can restrict the histogram to a particular range of, of colors so that it changes the look of the whole thing. Again, something you can play with. Uh, uh, as you need to. It's better for riparian studies or forest land studies or farms or things like that. Uh, or if we were to do uh, an area like this house over here, you would see bright green on all of the green stuff and uh, not so much here where that empty lot is. Okay, getting rid of the plant health. Uh, and we're back now to the, the map without any annotations. But the annotations marker we turned off, we turn it back on uh, by going back there. Okay. So that's our photogrammetry. It's how you can uh, work with it and get some of the data that you want and uh, find out whatever you want to find out about the property, especially during the project. Uh, as this project progresses, uh, we'll be shooting periodic photogrammetry uh, so that you can compare. Um, one uh, day to a, a day sometime later on or before and see how things are changing and whether or not you're accomplishing what you think you want to accomplish. Uh, and we can also add annotations to it. Uh, the annotations, by the way, can be transferred from one day's map to another day's map if you want to individually or in bulk. 
uh, lots of things like that. Again, if there's anything that you uh, would like to be able to do with this that I haven't talked about, or you wonder how something works uh, a little better, let me know. Or let Joni know when you'd like another map run so that we can continue to keep this uh, project uh, current for you and meaningful to your project. So thanks very much for the opportunity to let me uh, share photogrammetry with you, especially on this exciting project uh, for the town of Clarkdale. Bye-bye.